Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Legion Live, where Norm and I come and talk at you about e-commerce or entrepreneurial or completely random things. Um, today, we're talking about some mistakes that people make. As we sat in our morning team meeting, we thought, what can we share that would be valuable? And a lot of you have indicated that you like these like common mistakes uh, topics. So we're going to kind of cover some of those for you today, specifically related to visual selling. What does visual selling mean, Norm? I made it sound fancy, but visual selling is just... Visual selling is visual selling? Uh, no, so it, you know what it is is sort of luring people in and attracting people to your product, really without them even thinking about it. It's just why does a product stand out, and how do you make that product st stand out? So uh, somebody will click on that listing. So the short version is visual selling means images, and we've. I don't know if any of you have watched Project W. It's the case study that we did with uh, Helium Ten on. Uh, Walmart selling on Walmart that was just released over the past few weeks. But one interesting thing is that Walmart really, really focuses on images over written content. And we're starting to see Amazon do that a little bit more and more, more picture options, more places we can put imagery. There's just a lot of real estate being given up for listings, but you can screw it up. You can make some horrendous mistakes. So Norm and I are going to go over what we came up with as the top five most common mistakes that we see people making in their visual selling slash imagery specific to Amazon. So the first one, Norm, I have to look over at my list, is uh, basically the mistake of not doing anything different, right? Can you explain that? Yeah. So, and this is this is for primarily for the search page. So when you land on that front page and everybody is, let's say it's a supplement bottle, everybody has this same supplement bottle, what makes you different? And this could be for anything. It could be a knife. It could be anything. So let's stick with a supplement bottle. It's a cylinder. Um, it's usually what it would be about 16 ounces, screw off top. Uh, anyway, usually they'll all fill the frame. Everybody's cut on. It's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. It can fit in there perfectly. Well, how do you make it different? Well, either a different color bottle, a different style of bottle. Uh, but in this case, if you know the rule, you can break the rule. And that might be not filling the frame or doing something a little bit different. It might be showing packaging. It might be. So this is um, this is really important too. take a look at your competitors and see if they're utilizing a graphic artist. So that graphic artist might be able to put a beam of light coming down the sides to look at mo look more uh, like a cylinder, or they might do that cylinder in a 3D rendering to make it look better. One of the things I like doing is that uh, for a lot of the labels people use, they use their standard, I'll take a photo of it, and it's just your label. I like to minimize it. I like to put the brand on. Um, put all the information that's required on it, make it loud, and just simplify it for that image. Then when somebody gets it, they'll see it, but it'll have all the other images. And usually you'll see that on a cylinder where you'll have the supplement information coming around the side, uh, ingredients or whatever on the other side. It just makes it really distracting. One other thing you can look at, if they don't have a package. Now, I'm not expecting this so much with uh, with cylinders or with uh, supplements, but with other products. Do you put a package in? Do you not put a package? If you put a package in, if everybody else has a black package, and I know this, if you take a look at, let's say, some knife companies, they all have black packaging. Well, how do you get away from that? Well, maybe putting some yellow into it or something like that to make it stand out. Also, the direction. If you have a, 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 a product that, and it's not, it's very hard to do with, with a supplement, but um, with a supplement, you might be able to have the angle going down if everything is straight on, or you might be able to, um, again, have a different type of lighting, make something, it could be the depth of field, but there's all sorts of little things that you can do to um, create your listing, your primary listing to be different. And on top of that, we'll talk about this a bit later, it's the quality of the image. So, you know, if your image sucks, 
uh, you know, it doesn't matter how good you do. If you go to the greatest graphic artist in the world, your image is still going to suck. So um, anyways, I think that's about it. Is there anything else from your end, Tim? No, and I w have actually been over here uh, trying to pull up an example. Check this out. So you, just to reiterate what Norm was saying, if we're scrolling through here with ginger supplements, basically everything's the same. The same, the same, the same, except for one. Did you guys see it? Just the one of packaging. So they didn't have to do anything crazy, but look how much that stands out compared to the others. But, you know, to Norm's point, they're kind of all the same. I like this. They actually changed the package, um, the package shape and size. And specific to the image, it fills up a lot more frame. So it just stands out, right? There's another one of the package. So lots of little tips that uh, that Norm gave, which is I think is is really cool because sometimes we miss out on or we, we miss the boat thinking about how we look compared to our other competitors on that main search page. And if we're just doing the same thing as everybody else, not good. There's another good one too. Yeah. So another tip that we wanted to share is specific to, I guess, how do we, how do we label this norm? Like not using the real estate. Right. And what I mean by that is there is a lot of space on an image that we can tell a story. We can uh, specifically give information we can sell. And I have actually two, uh, examples, one that I think is fairly good and one that I think is fairly bad to help you visualize what I'm talking about here. You better These not both pull up my listings. Do it. I hope you're not pulling up my listings and saying this one. All right. So we have a floating wooden shelf here. And if we look at the images, I'm just going to scroll through them. They're pretty good images. They're decent quality. Um, they've even got a little detail shot here, right? There is one image here that just shows the dimensions. But look at all of this wasted real estate. There's a lot of places that they could be showing additional stuff, um, telling additional details, telling additional reasons why they should buy it. Now, if you look at this listing, this is almost the exact same product, right? But watch the difference in their listings. Whoa. I love this slide or this, uh, this image because when I'm thinking about how to install these things, check this out. They're telling us um, all sorts of information we didn't even think to ask. This solid wood, extra uh, water repellent. It shows how it's actually installed, right? The weight that it can hold. It's amazing. Now, they do have lifestyle photos. That's great. But they go in and they tell a lot more details. Now, I suspect that some of this stuff, like the weight that it can hold and the way the brackets are, in this other listing are actually in the uh, listing themselves, right? So we can go in here. Here's the dimensions, floating shelves. It's probably also in the product description. Yeah, there's some more stuff there. But my point is we miss a big opportunity on prioritizing information on images because people look there first. So we need to be creative about our images, not just three basic pictures and four lifestyle like a lot of people do. Vary it up and use this real estate, which is very, very important to give more information about your product. Norm, number three. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure. I know we talked about this just beforehand. Does the benefits fit into this category as well? I think this is different. I think that that lifestyle is different. Okay. All right. So lifestyle and overlooking uh, or overloading stock images. Lifestyle is so important. So we have to build authority, trust to get those sales. And one of the ways to build authority, quality images, but also showing somebody using the bloody product. <laughs> you know, do they like it? Do they have a smile on their face? Um, you know, do they have they enjoyed the user experience? And this is also important when you, you know, get reviews and hopefully they'll add videos and photographs. But in your slide deck, you want to have that and maybe one, maybe two images, depending on your category, showing somebody that's unboxing or utilizing the product. And you might go to an influencer to get this, uh, but make sure you're seeing that they're smiling. You know, they like the product. I see so many images where uh, in lifestyle images where it might be an unboxing video, but, you know, it's it's somebody who's just having a bad day or something. They're not smiling. It doesn't do any good for the image. The other thing is don't overload stock images. I don't like using stock images. I'd rather pay for an influencer or I go to a product uh, like a, 
a product photographer, I will hire a model. Models do not have to be expensive. Um, I do this for pets. I do this for humans. Anyways, um, I want to make sure that it looks real and it's not. And I, I know this for a fact. In my category, I sell soap. I have seen the same image of the same lady sitting in a bathtub, relaxing with all these bubbles, holding up a bar of soap that's five times bigger than her hand. Everybody knows it's a fake image. And um, also, everybody goes to the free image sites like Pixabay. Uh, not a bad site, but there's other places like Unsplash, which is really high quality images, or pay. Just go to, uh, uh, go to um, Adobe Stock, for example. You might pay for you know a month, but download 10 images and you know you'll have 10 images or whatever your plan is for the next month or you can go to AppSumo even and AppSumo ha usually has one or two stock photographers or stock um, apps that you can get very inexpensively that not everybody and his mother is using but at the end of the day I really like to use influencer or I'll pay for the model all right. Number four that we see people doing is not doing what Norm calls the reader digest version of images. Now, we're going to change cadence here, Norm. And if you would cover number four, too, and talk about what you mean with this whole reader's digest thing. OK, so people like to write books. People like to write books in their bullet points. People like to write books in their um, in their images. No one reads them. Nobody reads your bullet points in your images. If they're looking at images, they want images. They don't want to read very much. So one of the things that you can do is just highlight just a couple of the words. What is that benefit in the first, second, third bullet point? And you can show those in your images. And that way, people can see the bullet, see the graphic, and if they want more information, check out your, your bullet points. And, and, and just to make sure you're not, this is different than what I was showing with like some key features. Mm -hmm. You're actually talking about writing down, or I was showing like key details. You're talking yeah. about using an image to share like a key product feature as like a bullet point, just a shorter version, right? So it doesn't even have to be an image. So let's say, uh, let's have an example of a garden shear. Okay, so you might have, three circles with images in them and you might say three benefits and it could be um, the spring it could be um, heavy duty I don't know uh, sharpness or titanium blade and you can highlight each one of these that are also featured in the bullet points but it's only like one or two words or three words max um, you don't want to write that whole book and you know them Tim like you you know you see these and you go what the heck was this person thinking? You know, who's going to read it? And it looks ugly. So by doing this, and you can do this with ingredients. So, you know, show a graphic. If you're using coconut oil and olive oil and lavender, show an image of each one of these. You're, you're, you've got ingredients and maybe beside it, olive oil, um, lavender, chocolate, whatever it is. Now, a company that you can look at that does a great job of this is Burt's Bees. Burt's Bees, bees you, know, you know, the the lipstick or lip chap or chapel, whatever that stuff's, I don't use it. Anyways, Burt's Bees does a great job of showing that if it's a chocolate flavored, they make a mouth watering graphic of chocolate. You're not buying chocolate from them, that's their flavor. And that's the same thing with all the other flavors. There's no, gra there's no words on there, it's just a, a graphic, they don't have to. Yep. So, Anyways, that's my Reader's Digest. All right. And then the fifth mistake that we see people make common commonly is not using all the picture options, right? Depending on the category on Amazon, you have uh, anywhere from like seven to nine and sometimes even more image slots. And I see a lot of people that follow just the generic, this is how you sell on Amazon guidelines, they have seven images and they miss out on that eighth and ninth, all right? So make sure that you're using all the spots. If you are have two extra spots right now and you don't have an image to fill them with go find a generic picture just to backfill temporarily um create an infographic create a reader's digest bullet point slides something that real estate's expensive if we think about a retail store and the square footage on the floor 
you're going to pay a lot of money based on the number of potential shoppers that walk past that piece of floor, right? Your listing is floor. And if Amazon is giving you essentially another shelf space, maybe another place to hang another picture, another sales rep to stand there, and you're not using it, you're wasting your time or you're wasting, you, I shouldn't say you're wasting your time, you're wasting a very valuable resource, which is essentially free advertising. So make sure they're using all those spots and go back and check. If you set up a listing three years ago, and you haven't messed with it, you may actually have more picture slots now than you used to because some categories Amazon has added them, you might not even realize it. So go back and check that and use all the space. And you know, so, uh, and I don't know if you can pull up that one floating shelf because mm-hmm. I noticed that uh, they weren't using all their their spaces there. But some people, and we hear this, people say, well, we only get seven, seven images. And that's incorrect, uh, depending on the category. They can't see it, but once they click on the image, any image of those seven images, then you're going to be opened up to the master, I call it a a master slide deck, where two images might be hidden. And then you could just kind of slide those in. I think this, uh, I'm not sure if that was the one. Yeah, there you go. So they they have seven, and they could be showing nine. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'd love to hear from any of you what other mistakes you potentially may have made or you may see people making. Um, I think that understanding mistakes and things that we should do differently is exceptionally valuable in everything that we do. So we'd love to hear from you. If you want to tell us maybe one that we missed that you see people making with their images, leave us a post in our Private Label Legion Facebook group. Uh, If you're not a member of that, it's a free Facebook group and community. Go check it out. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment on the YouTube comment section. Anything else, Norm? Yeah, yeah. I really love your haircut. Thank you. I just got that a little bit ago. That was uh, that was my appointment. That's why we had to go 10 minutes latest. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> getting my ears lowered. So <laughs> thank you for uh, pointing that out, Norm. I know you're just jealous because you can't uh, get yeah, yeah, that's right. Take the knife. All right. <laughs> well, thank you all for being on. We'll see you next week. Hey, next week we're going to come to you live from – the Vegas, Las Vegas Convention Center at ASD, where Norm and I are going to be for the ASD slash IRC show. And Kelsey's going to make sure we have on our calendar, Kelsey, if you're listening, to actually go live from there and share some cool stuff that we've seen. So we'll see you guys next week. See you later.